What is baptism in the Holy Spirit really? An opinion of Dr. Galen Curra. In ancient times, the Lord God used to put his spirit on certain individuals, enabling them to serve as prophets who spoke and wrote messages from God. The same ancient prophets foresaw a time when God would pour out his spirit on all who believed in the coming Messiah. In the 15th century BCE, the Israelite prophet Moses declared, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. We notice that this passage reveals four elements. One, the Lord's action. Two, his own spirit. Three, the totality of his people. And four, becoming prophets. Such an event did not occur before the first century CE. In the ninth century BCE, the Israelite prophet Joel revealed a promise from the Lord about a far future. I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Again, we note the same four elements, along with dreams and visions, and no age or gender discrimination. In the 8th century BCE, the Israelite prophet Isaiah foretold two future comings of the Lord's Spirit. The first promise was for the Lord's special servant, presumed to be the future Messiah. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the nations. The second promise was for the whole nation. I will pour water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground, I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. In the first century CE, the prophet John the Baptist began announcing the soon coming of the Messiah by declaring, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John explained that the term fire referred to the coming wrath of God against those who refused to repent. Since John was preaching beside the Jordan River, he chose to say that he was baptizing the repentant, borrowing the Greek word baptizo from the ancient Greek version of the Bible, where it says that a Syrian military officer so went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. Towards the year 29 CE, the promise in Isaiah 42 was fulfilled at the baptism of Jesus when John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Once, during Passover week, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me, and let drink, whoever believes in me. As the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This translation reflects the Greek grammar of the passage, and recognizes that it is the Lord himself who is the source of the Spirit given to Christian believers. In the year 33 CE, shortly after his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus met with his apostles. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, 
which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Some days later, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Apostle Peter explained that this event fulfilled the prophet Joel's prophecy. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you, listen carefully to what I say. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Peter then commanded everyone to repent, promising the Holy Spirit to everyone. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Ever since that day, Every Jewish person who repents and believes in Yeshua, Jesus, receives the Holy Spirit. After some months, Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. After Peter saw a vision from the Lord, he accepted an invitation to visit the home of a foreign Gentile military officer in another town, where he recounted the life, miracles, death, and resurrection of Jesus. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Returned to Jerusalem, Peter explained to the other apostles, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles God has granted repentance that leads to life. Ever since that day, every non-Jewish person who repents and believes in Jesus Christ receives the Holy Spirit. Lastly, far away in Corinth, Greece, the Apostle Paul found some disciples of John the Baptist who had told them that Messiah was coming. Paul explained it to them. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. The Apostle Paul later wrote a letter to Jewish and Gentile Christians in Corinth, affirming that we believers all receive the Holy Spirit, as the prophets had foretold, as John had announced, and as Jesus promised. We were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so the body is not made up of one part but of many. Thus the baptism in the Holy Spirit was the promised coming of the Holy Spirit to the first Jewish and Gentile Christian believers. Since then, 
all who repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are thereby baptized in the Holy Spirit without distinction of age, gender, ethnicity, or social class.